Okay. Um, so, to kind of make a warm welcome to Stina, who, if you notice, the gentleman sitting at the end of the table, uh, this Stan Krantz, which I don't think is a stranger to any of you, um, has joined our team as existing industry coordinator. So, he started on January 5th. And he's done very well so far, so we're excited to have him and um, putting him in, implementing him into his new role. Um, I do have some unfortunate news that I will bring up. Um, Mr. Ricketts, as you know, um, has been planning on retiring for some time now, so his last day will actually be January 31st with us. So please wish him a fun farewell on the way out. Um, but he will not be a stranger, and he has told me he will not be a stranger, and we will call him often, so he may not, he may <laughs> still want to be on the app books. I'm not sure. So, um, he's been excellent in giving us a transitional period and helping us stand, and we're thankful for the time and effort that you've given. So, thank you so much for thank that. Thank you. May I just briefly respond and tell you that it's, my, it's been my distinct pleasure and honor to serve the citizens of this community working with you and, and for you. Uh, for the past uh, several years, and, and and I will not be a stranger. I will help and assist in any way that I can. So thank you for the opportunity to, to work with you and to serve the citizens of Alabama. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, Alan. Um, if I might, um, during the times when I was chairman, I found that uh, your advice, your counsel, was just simply invaluable. Um, we're going to miss you. Thank you for all of the service you provided to us. Um, so, moving along in that regard, um, Lou sent out a notice to you, a survey to check with you on dates for a board retreat. Um, it seems that the consensus is April 10th, so if you have not responded to Ms. Williams, please make sure that you do so, um, so that April 10th will be on your calendar and plan for it to be, you know, an 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. type thing. So plan for a full day. Um, we'll also be doing a staff retreat before that. So that was Scott Curtis today, just to kind of get our, you know, make our reporting necessary to you. Um, Megan went through all the presentations that I've pretty much been doing. Uh, I continue moving forward with that. So I thought what I would do is share with you the presentation that I did for the city council uh, their retreat and just talk about a year in review of what 2014 looked like. So we highlighted, um, you did a great job, Roy, you know, calculating all the numbers that express scripts, but just from an existing industry new perspective, we've, we've seen 700 jobs created in our community just from the efforts that we've been doing on working with our existing industries and those are new jobs. A lot of times we take for granted again that they're here those aren't new jobs, but they are new. They were not here a year ago. Um, these are the expansion opportunities that we've um, identified through our existing industry visits. And you've seen that list in the summary that you've had. Um, and this kind of outlines for you what those opportunities look like from a capital investment as well as new jobs being created. And this is just for 2015 uh, that we've identified moving forward. And um, RFI submissions, one of the things that we try to look at to measure our activity is what are we seeing from the Georgia Department of Economic Develop Development as it relates to requests for information. We saw 16 of those last year, was actually, which is actually up from 2013, which was 12. And the year before that, it was around 10 to 12 as well. So we're starting to see an increase, and I would say this has probably been the busiest January. Um, since I've been here. So we've had a lot of great activity. To kind of give you an overview of budget and financing, and I want to tie that to our program of work a little bit. Um, Expense-wise, operations is the majority of our expense, and that includes anywhere from the utilities, um, infrastructure, um, staff, salaries, benefits, postage, travel, etc. Professional development, all of that is included in operations. Our industrial park maintenance is around $90,000 a year. And I know we kind of look at the financials every year, but I just wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit um, from the industrial park maintenance side. So that's all the utilities, um, mowing, landscaping, you name it, that's all coming out of there. 
Um, and then our existing industry program, we budget about $10,000 a year. So I wanted you to kind of keep that in the back of your mind. Um, for the recruitment side, we budget about $120,000. And we always average around 40 to 50%, maybe 60% of that budget, um, because there's some travel wrapped in there, there's um, trade shows and some recruitment efforts that we put in, prospect development that we put in there, and then our marketing. But we always set aside about $40,000 of that to do engineering work for new projects. So that's based in there, and that's why we don't always meet that on the budget line. So that brings us up to about $950,000. What I think a lot of us sometimes don't realize that we have is that bond-seeking fund. So while we get $3 million a year, estimated $3 million a year, we do have that bond-seeking fund requirement that goes, that is not seen by us and pays off 1996 bonds as well as our 2008 bonds. So overall, we operate at about a negative 134,000, but we've got some cash and reserves, and we've got some leftover money from our 2008 bonds to help with any future projects that way that we may have. Um, so just to kind of give you an explanation of our budget. Um, we talked hey, about- I have a question. Sure. When you go back to that grant, um, under our operations expenses, have we seen a general decrease since we've relocated to this building in terms of our operations relative to keeping the doors open? I don't think we've had enough data, I think, to, to kind of look at that. We, you know, trended kind of normal. I think we've trended equally. Cool. Um, but I don't know that we've had enough, been here long well, enough to see what that overall yeah, well, utilities are going to cost. The expense of the move, you know, <coughs> probably sure. offset by the, by the no rent factor for the latter right. part of the But month. over time, that yeah. should surely. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Well, you want do you want to point out the difference in we have to spend on existing industry and then recruitment? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. So the $10,000 existing industry, and so just some little facts for you, and just overall knowledge, is over 10 years, existing industries have created more jobs than new industries have. So they've created almost 2,000 jobs um, in about 10 years with 34 existing industry expansions. And then over 10 years, your new industries have created 13, around 1,300 jobs with 22 new projects. And I would let you know that Home Depot was included in that, which was about 500 to 600 jobs. Um, so one of the, so what I wanted to talk about is look at the $10,000 as opposed to the recruitment and development of a new project and how long and the time and effort it takes into putting that new project and getting the new project here. Um, there's a greater return on investment, as you can see, from a dollar's perspective, a job's perspective, um, in your existing industry program. So why do we have to take care of our exist existing industries? I know Terry probably sees this, and you probably see this as well, Tom, and you as well, is it is becoming increasingly more competitive. The world is not flat. I think it's the world is flat, the world's not flat, we're still with us that thing. But um, we complete globally. So like right now we were looking at a project that's in they're looking at Mexico and Georgia. Um, we complete compete nationally as well as locally from communities to communities for those expansions from whether or not they're going to a community next door, north, or they're staying here. But most importantly, we made a huge investment into those existing industries when we brought them here to begin with. I think Steve can attest to that. And the time and the dollars that we put into them, and just like you would maintain any customer, we need to make sure that they're doing, they have the infrastructure that they need, and that they have the resources and the environment to continue to grow. And Andrea, I would add that for, for new industries that may be looking, they're going to look at the health of your existing industries Correct. before they decide to make any definite decisions. So that is an important piece of it. That's right. Think. So actually the first phone call they usually make is not to us. It's usually to somebody in their industry cluster. So a lot of times I can talk to our existing industry and know who's looking, um, if there's somebody looking in our community. So you're absolutely right. <coughs> any questions? Um, but we do work to develop prospects, and we do um, have great resources that can go towards that. 
So the way that we look at developing our prospects is really maintaining the relationships that we have built, that we currently have, and building new ones. We focus on our state allies with the Georgia Department of Economic Development, and that also includes our utilities companies, Georgia Power, Georgia EMC, Electric Cities of Georgia, and there are several other allies that we have at that level, Nor Norfolk Southern, CSX, those individuals as well that we work with to constantly keep them updated on what we're doing and what trends they're seeing. Um, we also build relationships with our location advisors. And you can see a list of what we've done in the past and what we're going to be doing in the future. And then also we build relationships with our direct corporate contacts. So another important real, um, reason why we do our existing industry program is because they can make referrals to us as well for suppliers that will make their industry operate at a smoother, more low cost advantage here in Valdosta Lowndes County. Um, Megan gave a very thorough marketing report. So as you can see, she's, she's very busy. One of the things that we recently did was went through a marketing review and a lot of the stuff that she's given us feedback on, she's made a lot of great recommendations and we've implemented that. But we have to have everything in place ahead of time because we don't have time to put it together. And we have to be very proactive, we can no longer be reactive. Um, so we're being considered before we even know so. So we've worked to do this marketing message that you saw here to make that more concise and accurate depiction of our community. Um, we update our website, so a little, very few people know that Megan probably manages about five different websites. Um, and then we also work on our marketing. So that's our developer events, our industry flyers, park and building flyers, direct mail, social media, um, and our relationship with our local outlets as well. So just a lot that goes into the marketing communication side of it. And a lot of people don't understand that we have a lot of resources from the regional side as well that we work on. So there's some different initiatives that we're part of now. Um, I've called this our South Regional or South Georgia Regional Alliance. And that's our four county, Brooks County, Cook County, Lowndes, and Thomas. Thomas, because partnering with Brooks and the relationship that they have. But really and truly, I've talked about this from last year, we visit um, companies and consultants together to talk about our region and the resources we have as a whole. Because as we know, they don't just look at Lowndes County, they look at our region. Um, so we do that, we travel together, we, as, you know, coming up next week, I'll be in Atlanta for the week, and part of that trip revolves around our legislative dinners, as well as meeting with some location advisors in Atlanta. Um, our South Georgia Joint Development Authority is really a, um, Job tax credit, it helps fund some of our communities around us that need additional resources and does some local things as well. Um, but we work through that as well. We have that resource to us. Um, but we also just became a part of the Locate South Georgia initiative, which we've talked about. And that's a large marketing initiative that's really to talk about South Georgia as a place of doing business and what all we do have here in South Georgia that people may not be aware of. So um, marketing that to our state allies as well as it's the first, well it's not the first year, but the first year where we've all combined a lot of our efforts. So we also work on that as well. One of the things that the city asked me to do was talk about some non-traditional economic development that things that take place in our community that's film, media, and digital entertainment. This is a huge hot button right now. I just wanted to show you the numbers of the economic impact in the film. Um, and just to let you know that we've worked with Tim Riddle at the Tourism Authority and just talking about film as an industry, what we can do to help if we need to be, as a, to be there as a resource, um, and just working together with him. Um, it really is an industry because it's something you have to um, have the infrastructure here to support it. So you have to have, it's location driven, it's project driven, it's workforce driven, and then you've got to have a community that wants it because there's a permitting process that has to um, take place when you're recruiting movie and film. And then that was pretty much the end of the presentation. So, I don't think I can end it. 
Um, so if y'all have any questions, I'll be happy to answer that. Um, just a lot of travel coming up in the next few months, and I think that concludes my report. Any questions for Andrew? All right, thank you, Amy. I was I was at the city council presentation. We had the opportunity, or Andrew had the opportunity to present at the uh, the retreat that was recently held, and it was very well received. A lot of good participation, uh, a lot of engaging conversations about what we do and how they can help us. And I think the plan is to uh, get with the county as well and make this presentation. And um, so it's a unified effort of uh, economic development activity. I'd also like to recognize Andrea. She probably doesn't. I haven't told any of you this, but she's been voted by her peers as a top 50 economic developer, develop, economic developer uh, in the United States. And so she will be submitting her, um, you know, I guess her final resume for consideration. I don't know if they recognize what the next level is. It's but, a, uh, um, well, there's top 50 in the podcast series. So we go on and have an interview and talk about our um, just how we got to where we are today, what our philosophy is behind economic development of our team, and I've been very fortunate to have a good team. Yeah. I mean, I think it, it says like it's also the, the people in there making those nominations are our peers, but also the uh, state economic developers and the people that really drive projects, and uh, the fact that they've recognized one of our own here in Valdosta, Miles County, in Andrea, is, um, is a good testament for your hard work, and um, we thank you for that. Keep it up. All right. <clears throat> All right, Mr. Gupton, anything to report today? Well, we do have some tax bills coming out for the <coughs> business community. And, uh, and, and our young man today has <coughs> gone over about two hours of that to get him uh, involved in it. We will be working with the Board of Tax Assessors to get that information out to the people that we've been dealing with. Uh, Alan did mention the fact that we're working on the development agreement and venture at least for one of our projects. And we, have, we should that have, we will have that uh, uh, reviewed and come back to you for consideration, certainly by the next meeting. Uh, that's about it. Right there. Yeah. Any questions? Um, next citizens to be heard, we'll recognize uh, Commissioner. <coughs> 